So now let's have a look into the moving average model. So in the previous model, in the total average, we were just taking average of all the previous data points available. But in the moving average, we will select a moving average period. For instance, last two periods, last three periods, last 10 periods. And then we, for every forecast point, we only take the average of the last, those periods that we mentioned in the moving average, two, three, four, five, 10, whatever it is, okay? And that's what you see here. That's the representation. Okay, so yt minus i. So yt, the value of yt will be the average. So here we do the summation of all the previous periods and divide by the number of the periods. Okay, so if, if we have three periods, so it will be then yt minus three, right? Yt minus three. That means we have, we consider only three previous data points and we take the summation of that. We take the summation of the three data points and then we divide it by three. Then we get the average of the last three data points. Okay, so that's how the moving average models work. And we can we can do last two points, last ten points. It's up to us. And normally it is good to actually play with this with different moving average peers and see which one provides the better forecast. For different time series, different moving average can work better. So now let's have a look how it works in Excel. Here we are, and we are going to call it MAVG. I will mention two, so just to refer to the fact that I'm using two moving average peers. So then if I take two moving average peers, then actually I will be starting from this point. So what I will do here is just take the average of the last two peers of my real data. And then I will just scroll it down. Then it will do always the same thing. It will always take the average of the last two peers, as you can see here, okay? So that's my moving average to forecast. And let's say we want to check for the error of that. So I'm just going to do error M A V G two. So here to calculate the error, I'm following the MAP calculation. So again, what I will do is I will start with the function and then absolute. And I take the difference between the real value and the forecasted value. And then I divide it by the real value and then enter. So this is my percentage of error for this period of time for March. And then I'll double click and then it will do it for all the peers. And then we have our error values ready. One more thing for this part. So I have done a small mistake. So up to this point, we had, we have data up to this point. So here, we can take the average of these two, right? That's okay. But when we are doing the forecast here, so we are in theory, we have only this data point available, but not the second one. So what we can do is we can take the average of the data point available and our previous forecast value, okay? So actually I should use comma, so D43 comma this one, okay, enter. And then in this point, I don't really have any real data point available. So what I will do, I will take the average of, I will take the average of the last two data points here. Okay, and enter. And then if I just drag it, then I'm having all the previous two forecasted values taken average of, okay? So that will be my moving average forecast, right? So here you see in the, in the previous two approaches, when we are doing the naive forecast and when we were doing the averaging, we were actually having the same value for the whole period of my dynamic forecast. But when we are doing the moving average, we are actually having a different uh, values for each of the forecast values, even when we are doing the dynamic forecast, because we, we can now take the average of the forecasted, previous forecasted values, okay? So this part here, is again our forecast, okay? And the one up to the, above that are our training data peers. And again, for MAP and these ones, I will just actually drag these equations and I will remove this one because we don't have to do anything for them. So here, you see this is the average of this whole error column, okay? I should actually reduce one less, yeah, this part. So. And here it's uh, for the training part. Again, I should reduce one of them. Okay, I think it didn't do anything. And for that test part, it looks fine. Okay. 
So now here, if we again compare a little bit with the previous ones, you see overall MAP actually still the naive one is the lowest. Also for the training sample MAP, you can see that still this one is the lowest one. Okay. And for this part, for the test sample, actually the the averaging approach has the lowest error. Okay. So anyway, so now we know at least these three approaches, but let's move on. We will see some more models, right? And just to repeat once again, so if you are doing moving average three, then you will just take the, you will start here in this data point and you will start with the average of three peers. And then you will do always three peers for all the forecast values. Okay, you will always take the average of last three peers for all the forecast values. If you go for moving average 10, if you have a large data sample, then actually you can go for moving average 10 and see how that works. And you will always take the average of last 10 data points. So this averaging approach, when we were expanding by one point every time, that was actually similar to the expanding forecast approach. And when we look in the moving average, where we keep moving, we, we keep rolling our sample. So we select two or three previous data points and then we keep rolling that. So this is similar to the rolling forecast approach. So now let's move on to weighted moving average.